Coming up, we've got a review of the Chromecast, a new speaker from Ultimate Ears, a camera that's both ruggedized and waterproof, and a new device that makes you look like Tom Cruise when you're using your computer. It's time to watch before you buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Before You Buy is brought to you by Shutterstock.com. With over 26 million high-quality stock photos, illustrations, vectors, and video clips, Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. For 30% off your new account, go to Shutterstock.com and use the offer code Before You Buy 8. And by Audible.com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, go to audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy. Hello and welcome to Before You Buy, Twit's product review show. We get the great, latest, greatest products and we give them to our uh, staff, give you a chance to see what our staff uh, thinks about them. I've also got the uh, Moto X phone, the hot new uh, phone from Google Rola to uh, take a look at my official review coming up later on in the show. But let's kick things off uh, off the top with uh, Chad Johnson, who is my producer and the host of OMG Craft and the old redhead, we call him, because he's about 22 <laughs> Why? Why? years old and <laughs> his hair is red. red. What? Uh, but uh, we, uh, this is actually fun because Google came out with three new products in the last uh, uh, few weeks. Right. Uh, we already did the Nexus 7 last week. I'm going to do the Moto X a little later on. But we let you do the Chromecast. I have and the you Chromecast. know why? Because you won the race. I did. There was <laughs> So whenever a new product comes out. We all race to buy There's it. a race to see who can get it first if none of us have gotten a review. And you yet. won. Yeah. Um, and By so, the way, can we, Jeff, can you move out of the shot? Oh, oh, he's actually there. <laughs> I have a little parrot. His name is Jeff Needles. He'll be leaving later for college. He did that on purpose, right? This is his last chance, yeah. right? Last before you buy. Yeah. Uh, he's going to review in just a second the Leap Motion. Yeah. But uh, the Chromecast got a lot of excitement, primarily because of its very low price. Right. In fact, so low that it's sold out. Uh, everywhere. You can't get it. Yes, absolutely. So what the Chromecast does is it actually does sort of twofold um, jobs. Uh, a lot of people will compare it to the Apple TV, um, and it has some functionality where you can sort of cast a screen or send a screen to the device. But really what it is is its own standalone uh, computer that can play content from different services. So the moment... Uh, things that it works really great with is uh, YouTube, so your YouTube app on your phone or your iPad, um, or Netflix, same same sort of deal, um, and Google Play Music and movies and anything you would have bought on uh, Google Play. Uh, you can also, so that's one thing, is that it's a computer that can play those services. The dongle is. The dongle is. Is a computer. And, and I don't have it with me because I've plugged it's it in plugged the, in the TV. I plugged it in the TV. But it's so like actually, a USB key with a right. bulge at the end. It doesn't have a USB port. Uh, it has an HDMI port. Right. Because right. you're going to plug it into right. your TV. Because you're going to plug it into your TV. Yeah. It's, it's it made is. for the TV. Mm -hmm. Um, so one one way is to is to play these services. The other way is, is you can cast a, a screen, uh, a tab in your Chrome browser to it, and that will sort of allow you to do everything else that you can't do through your mobile apps. You can watch Twit that way. So you could watch Twit. Yeah, it's you like can, Air, Apple's AirPlay kind of. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, and on top of that, Google has released an API so that other people can write their own apps that will play directly from the device, and so you can watch it on your screen without having to go op open up your laptop and find a tab and then cast a tab which is very exciting because it works really great. So let me uh, walk you through how this works. On my mobile phone, let me go ahead and start with YouTube. So I'm going to go find the YouTube app that I have, now, that I've always had on my phone. You're using an Android phone, but this works also on iOS? It does. Okay. It does. And um, it will also work on your PC um, using the uh, extension, Chromecast the Google extension Chrome extension for Chrome. Extension. So the key to understand is that, and the thing that makes this different from Apple TV is that you're doing this from apps. Right. 
There's a limited number of apps right. now, but more will come, as you said, because Google's opened the API. There's an open SDK. The way to think of it is the apps that you've always had on your phone are now the remote control that you'll use for your Chromecast. So I'm in the normal YouTube app. This isn't some fancy Chromecast YouTube app. This is the normal app that I've always used. But somehow it magically got updated. But it just knows. So let me just go ahead. And uh, on the top, I have an icon for the uh, Chromecast. I now, actually, that only shows up, I should point out, if you have a Chromecast on the same Wi-Fi right. network is your phone right so it doesn't there is not a little, always there there's a tiny amount of setup um but once you're on the same wi-fi network as the as the device that little icon appears it's gone if you don't have it connected i'll go ahead and click a thing and go ahead and cr cast it over to so my now, chromecast now i have three chromecasts in my house so it will show all three and right. i can choose which one i want to during cast the setup to. process you can rename a, a chromecast. i did i have living room gym playroom right. that kind of and thing. so i've named this one omg chad's chromecast and there just what like you, that wow that's a youtube video this is a youtube video playing on the chromecast now you, you know what the quality is good it is good so what it will do is it will try to pull the highest quality that your wi-fi will allow so this should be at 720, which is what we uploaded this as because we have a very fast internet connection. Now, and you can turn your phone off. Here's the thing. I have this <laughs> phone, and here's the demo that I love to do. It's you not may coming think, from the phone. You may think that the phone is the thing catching the YouTube video and then sending it over the Chromecast. But what I'm going to do is pull off the back of the phone and pull the battery out oh, of the dead. phone. It is completely dead, but the YouTube video That's is neat. still going on behind That's me. That's because the Chromecast, as you said, is a computer. I think it's a good way to think of it. It's doing the work. It's its own device that is yeah. playing the media that you've sent to it. So truly, your phone and all these other devices are remote controls for the Chromecast. Now, let me go ahead and do something that's also really cool is that it is cross-platform. So I'm going to use my iPad, an iOS device, to take over the Chromecast. And I'll also go ahead and show off another app while I'm doing it. Let me go ahead and open up Netflix. And I'm going to take over the, the cast. So over in Netflix, uh, let me actually get out of the same episode thing. I was watching. Same thing. There's you, a little Chromecast button right, on the top. Right, there's a Chromecast oh, button here. My it really wants to play that. It really, really <laughs> wants to play uh, Adventure Time. Let me go ahead and, and cancel and close the, the app. There we go. Sorry. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Netflix. Okay. And once Netflix loads in, because I just killed it. You closed it. it yeah, yeah I, I just closed it. There will be the same cast icon that we had on YouTube. You you broke Netflix. You know, maybe Netflix doesn't want to play you broke with us. So, so let's go that, ahead and jump it'll over come YouTube. Up. It'll come up. All right. Now, so, so the U this is on iOS. The YouTube app, you can... You still, you can do the same thing. So it actually says now playing up in the corner, and it says course MC edit. Oh, so it knew that it, it was knew. playing. It knew that it was playing, and wow. I can go ahead and grab this. You know what? I'm going to say uh, this Chromecast. I don't want to cast to anymore. Let's go back to the iPad, and now it'll play the video. I don't actually actually don't. still playing the video on the Chromecast. So you could watch so it. I can watch it twice <laughs> if I wanted to. I, I can't get enough of OMG uh, Craft. It's a good show. I right, watch exactly. It twice. Sure. Yeah. Um, let's see. There we go. So Netflix now works. So now let me go ahead and take over the, over the device. So there's the little icon up here. And so now I'm going to go ahead and take over the Chromecast here. And this, again, this is on an iPad. This is an iOS right. device. Uh, it doesn't look. It doesn't look like a. Plan. Now this is one thing I have noticed with mine is that sometimes gaining regaining control of an existing stream is a little tricky. But once there you start go. playing something. On the uh, Netflix, right? So it was it was taking it over. You need to tell it stop, like stop, right. stop doing right. doing your your casting. Now it still thinks it's playing YouTube. And let me grab it. <laughs> that there we Netflix. go. Here we go. One other so, thing that's cool is this. Well, Netflix is set up to play 1080p on the Chromecast, yes. and if your bandwidth is sufficient, it really looks right. good. Right. Right. So now now we have it set up. It knows Netflix is is the app controlling it. So I can go ahead and play a video over here, and instead of playing it on the iPad, it'll play it on the Chromecast. Now, one, the last feature that I want to show off is, and I actually have to turn on. Well, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna let's just watch. Talk. I like Happy Tree Friends. Can we just well, watch this, that? Yeah, for, it's Adventure Time. But oh, Adventure Time. Same yeah, thing. yeah. Let's just watch Come that on, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So and because then, uh, I really enjoy this. What's show. really cool is is also <laughs> if you were to turn up the volume, you have control of the volume. That's really weird. From from my iPad, so I can turn it down. I can turn it up um, however, I, however I want. So that's Netflix. That's YouTube. What else can it do? So at the moment, we have also Google Play Music, which is really cool. Because if you have your TV hooked up to an entertainment system with lots of speakers, you can cast your music to it if you've uploaded music I've been or doing if you're on that. all access. And it sounds great. It's, awesome. it's really nice. And again, the volume control... 
the, the phone or the tablet becomes a, a remote because you can pause, rewind, skip, or turn volume up and down right. from the phone. Right. And we've already heard of lots of other uh, partners that are going to start building this into it. We've even heard Hulu. Like, you never thought that Hulu would do this, yeah. that, to have Hulu's stuff on, on screens. HBO Go has said they're HBO going to do Go. it. Um, the, oh, who else? Uh, I mean, we Revision have, 3 is going to do it. Three, we will do it. Working. Our Houdini 7, who does our uh, Twit app for iOS, says he's adding the button. It's something that anybody can do. You know who I'm waiting for? Amazon. They haven't announced it yet. But once Amazon yeah. streaming is on here, then it's really, in many ways, as functional as uh, Roku. or It doesn't have as many channels, admittedly, but it's so easy for app developers to add it. That's what I'm waiting to see. Right. Right, I, I if agree. everybody does this, man, this is a killer. And and it's it's up to those people to do it. What's right. really cool it's is Google, Google has has said, you know what? Yep. If you really want to add Chromecast compatibility, here's how you do it. Let's just go. Let's just move forward. So let's get into the pros and cons. Pros. Uh, it is inexpensive. If I haven't said it before, this is a thirty-five dollar dongle. Thirty-five bucks to have this added to your system. Next is it is cross-platform. So if you have an Android phone, an iOS phone, an iPad, or even just a computer that can install uh, the Chrome um, extension, Google Chrome uh, web browser, easy easy to do that. Next is, is simple to use. Yes, there are other things that do this functionality. You could buy a PC and hook it up to your TV and and do all this stuff, but it is not nearly as simple as this Chromecast to just use the apps that you've always been using to send it over. On the cons, it is USB powered. So at the back of the device, let me, I've already finished my review, so I'm going to go ahead and grab the device. We'll pull, pull it out of the TV here. Right. So it needs a power, separate power, by the way. Right. You have to plug that's, it into the wall. So this yeah. is the con, is that it needs a separate power. At the back, there's a USB um, a micro USB slot, and so you need to power it with USB. If you happen to have a TV with um, MHL, it will not pull power from that. It it always has to have this separate wire, which can be pretty distressing if you have a really clean setup, uh, have this sort of wire working around behind your TV. I have an MHL HDMI adapter uh, on my uh, AV receiver, and I was hoping because MHL has power that it would right. power. It does not. It does not. Um, and you also, have to plug it in. this is a tiny bit underpowered. There's a few times where I gave it a few commands, and you can see it sort of stuttering. But but once you're into something and it's working and it's and it's like you know playing Netflix, um, it's fine. I have noticed a lot of stuttering when I'm trying to cast a tab in Chrome over to it uh, because you need to have a really really fast. Um, either Wi-Fi connection or uh, it, the, the encoding just isn't quite up to snuff yet. It feels a tiny bit underpowered, but for the things that I'm using it now, I am really, really loving it. So $35 for the Chromecast. You can buy this uh, at the moment and not many places, but of, in the future, it'll be on the Play Store from Google, Amazon, uh, I believe... Uh, Best Buy yeah, is big box, mean, every, yeah, Best Buy, just about Staples, everywhere. that kind of place. People are waiting in line to get it at Best Buy on the days that the, the new that shipments come in. Yeah. So buy, try, don't buy. I'm going to absolutely say buy. A yeah. high recommendation. It's $35. If you want to add really nice compatibility, make your dumb TV a smart TV. $35 upgrade is absolutely worth it. I got a dumb hypothetical. $100, would you still buy it? <sighs> it's the price, isn't it? It is the price. Yeah, and, and, I wouldn't it, buy it for hundred bucks. I wouldn't buy it for hundred bucks. But it's a third the cost of an Apple TV. Uh, and my it, parents have a smart TV. I'm just like, I'm yeah. so sorry. I wish I could have just yeah. bought this for it's you, and you wouldn't have paid it. the extra. Yeah. Well, the thing to watch very closely is who adopts it, mm -hmm. and if not, and there's no reason why you couldn't have thousands of apps use Chromecast, right. and right. then it becomes a very, very attractive choice. Yeah, I'm glad I bought five. Yeah, I bought three, and <laughs> I've apologize. already given two away. <laughs> yeah, I apologize. I'm the one. Tad and I are the reason you can't get one. <laughs> right. Oh, and also, just to note, in the very beginning, there was a deal where you could get three months a subscription of Netflix. That's gone now. Um, so I just wanted to mention it because some people will say, well, I got it, and it was absolutely worth it because I got the— Yeah, then it was only 11 bucks. Then it was only 11 bucks. It's gone. <laughs> it, it, so I just wanted to mention it. Yeah, yeah.
Very nice. Thank you, Chad. Chad Absolutely. Johnson, host of OMG Craft. You just saw it on the uh, Chromecast uh, and produces uh, Twit and MacBreak Weekly and the Twig. Thank you for doing that. Absolutely. It's great. Absolutely. Uh, our next review uh, comes to us from our friend Tony Wang, who's our editor in chief at the Twit Brick House. Uh, we gave him uh, this little doohickey. This is a hot. Ca there are two really hot categories headphones and. Portable speakers. I guess people just like to take their music with them. This is the Ultimate Ears Boom Speaker. Let's see what Tony thought. I'm Tony for Twit and Before You Buy, and today I'm reviewing the UE Boom Portable Speaker. The UE Boom is a speaker that's designed and targeted toward people with active lifestyles, and that's why it comes with a little hook ring on the bottom, and you can hook it on your belt, on your keychain, on your backpack. It's got 15 hours of battery life and it only takes three hours to charge. And with 88 decibels of sound, it's powered by two 1.5 inch drivers and two two inch passive radiators. I don't even know what those radiators are, but they work really well. The speaker is supposed to deliver 360 degree sound into your room and wherever you are, but I do notice depending on which way the speaker is pointing, it's more like a 330 degree instead of 360 degrees. Now, this is designed for iOS devices, iPod, iPad, iPod Touch, but it's got a feature that it's not supported for iOS and it's the NFC, and that's why I really wanted to review this because I tried it out with my Nexus 4 and after the initial pairing, the NFC works superbly. I can have my phone Bluetooth turned off and all I have to do is tap it against the speaker and it will turn on the Bluetooth. Out of the box, it comes with a wall plug and a USB cable that's tangle free, so it's flat like a noodle. Another feature that the UE Boom has is that it's liquid level for protection. I don't really know what that means, but the material on this speaker has some sort of water resistance. So if you spill some water on there, if you're riding your bicycle in light rain, that should be okay. It also comes with a really well-developed and easy to use app for your phone. So you can actually have a party mode or double up where you pair two of these speakers together and you can actually set them as either stereo or left and right speaker. Now, unfortunately, you can only have two speakers I would love to have like 10 of these and just have a house party. Pro of the UE Boom, great sound recreation, is definitely loud enough to fill a small office room, let's say 15 by 15. And having two of these, you can fill up a really big living room with music with no problem. And the 15 hour battery life is really 15 hours. Con of the speaker, the only thing I can think of after using it for over a month is that it only works standing up because the speakers are around the sides. So if you put it down, you can definitely hear that the sound's being obstructed by your table. Buy, try, or don't buy, I'm actually going to give these guys a buy. Uh, I actually really like the design of the speaker itself. And it does really fill the room instead of more of the more directional sounding speaker that other companies offer in this price range. I'm telling you for Twitter, before you buy, and this is the UE Boom. <laughs> I couldn't stop it. That's awesome. I can't turn it off. Thank you. All right. <laughs> well, that it was works. Fun. <laughs> I actually uh, paired that and got it working while he was uh, doing his review. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> so there you go. And I like the little bongo sounds. <laughs> So I have to say, though, this reminds me a lot of the Jambox and a lot of other devices. It's a very hot category right now. It is. What do you think? Is there one that's better than the others? I like that one because it comes in pink. <laughs> it's really, it boils down to that. Shannon Morris will join us with her review of a waterproof phone in just a little bit. But before we do that, I want to thank our friends at Shutterstock. Dot com for supporting before you buy. Uh, Shutterstock is a great place to go if you make videos, if you blog, if you need images, videos, uh, vector, vector graphics, or anything, any kind of royalty-free uh, stock media. This is the place to go. First of all, the best search engine. Just awesome. You can even add uh, not just things, but thing, but like colors or or emotions or genders in the search tool. Find exactly what you want. And believe me. With over 20 million, actually it's more like 26 million now, uh, high quality stock photos, illustrations, vectors, and video clips, it's sure to have something you want. They add 
as uh, it says 10,000 images a day right here, but actually if I look at the site, it's more like 20,000 images every day. Always something new. You could choose individual image packs or a monthly subscription for the best deal. I have the 25 image a day subscription. Great for publications. Um, we use it. We use Shutterstock all the time. Download any image in any size. You pay a single price. That's what royalty free means. Use it in any medium you want. The search tools are great. The spectrum tool is nice. You could say, I only want to see blue sharks. <laughs> and you'll, you'll, I only see, want to see red sharks. And you can, once you set up an account, and I want you to do that because it's free. You don't need a credit card or anything. Once you set up an account, you can save these images to your light box. So you can kind of collect images, share them with other team members too. Great for inspiration. And if you've got an iPad, you've got to see the Shutterstock iPad app. Won a Webby Award for being fabu. It Well, that's technically the term. I think it's just wonderful. If you... Uh, if you use images, if you use video, if you're a creator, you'll love Shutterstock. By the way, truly global. They're all over the world. Multilingual customer support, dedicated corporate reps, full-time support throughout the week. There's so many great reasons to try Shutterstock. You don't need a credit card. Just start an account, begin using it, create a light box, share it with the friends. If you decide you want to buy an image or an image pack or a subscription, use the offer code before you buy eight, and you'll get 30% off any of those packages. That's why that annual subscription is such a good deal 30 30 30 percent off you do need to use our special offer code before you buy eight for the eighth month for august before you buy eight at sh that's all one word shutterstock.com we appreciate their support and uh, personally i appreciate all their great images i just love it um we can uh, do all of our reviews if you want to see them uh, in a number of ways you could see audio or video at our site twit.tv slash byb twit.tv slash byb but we also have a great before you buy channel on youtube where each of the individual reviews can be downloaded sometimes the full uh, longer review because we kind of sometimes edit them for a uh, length to put them in the show so to, uh, go to youtube.com slash before you buy and uh, take a look. Everything's there. It's a great way to share a review if you say, hey, you know, you should buy this. You know, you want to recommend it. Just send them a link from our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash before you buy. Our esteemed producer is uh, the great Shannon Morse, just back from <laughs> DEF CON. You can tell the I'm hacker like convention. very tired. <laughs> was it fun? It was, yeah. Lots of late night parties, and we did really well at our vendor Hack uh, five, was, Hack five had a booth there. Yes, we did. It was were you selling party. like hack stuff? We were selling Wi-Fi pineapples. They're penetration testing equipment. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, we're what very fun. proud of what we did. And we sold out <laughs> on great. the first day. Did of you? Some of our products. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that's crazy. That's awesome. So you can catch busy. Shannon on Threatwire, <laughs> which is at uh, YouTube.com/slash TechFeed. Yes. Uh, and of course on this show. Um, and we uh, let you, you let you, because you get to decide yeah. who gets to review what review the sony cybershot tx30 this is a TX30. ruggedized waterproof look at it it's very cute isn't it adorable? also in it pink comes in a bunch of different colors or is uh, that pink, red blue yeah this one's hot pink it also comes in a uh, pretty black and i believe there's a white one as well uh and it looks very nice it's got a nice design to it it's a sport camera it's a sport camera it's ruggedized so they say that it's dust proof waterproof shock proof and freeze proof i tested out the waterproof it does work underwater. You can shoot underwater with it? You can. You That's can even nice. shoot video underwater, which is very interesting. Um, so I like to call cameras like this uh, brat cams. <laughs> brat cams. <laughs> These are the kind of cameras that I would buy for my little sister. Yeah, who, for brats. Who tends to throw things and <laughs> drop things and break things. <laughs> Good for a, a, a teenager. She also likes things that come in pink. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a perfect choice for a teenager. I'll bite. It is rather expensive at $350. Ooh, it is expensive. For a point and shoot, that's kind of the high end, Yes, isn't it? it definitely yeah. is. When I was growing up, I was looking for cameras that were... 100 to 150 dollars right. when i was in high school so for me this is a little bit pricier for this range but i'm i'm thinking that it might be because of the the ruggedized experience that you have with it uh so on the back of it over here big lcd it looks like it's hard Huge to tell LCD. it's it, it is it's yeah, that size it's from holy cow edge to edge wow so i'll click okay here and it's it touch. touch screen yeah, it's 3.3 inches, it's OLED, and it's uh, high megapixels, too. That so looks really good. Very, very nice and clear, crisp yeah. screen. The problem that I had with this screen is that these icons are so small, it's really hard to accidentally touch the wrong thing. Yeah. Once you get into the actual menu, they're pretty big, but these original ones on the screen, mm -hmm. very small. 
Also, whenever you're taking photos with it, and I'll hold this up so you can see it, when you're taking photos with it, there's no real place to put your thumbs. So whenever you're taking a picture, you have to make sure that your thumb is like sitting over here it's on the not edges. Hitting an icon. So you don't accidentally hit like, mm. oops, go to the menu. My bad. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of a pain in the butt. But it has a physical snap button. It does, okay. yes. So on the top you have a movie button, you have your power on and off, and a full snap button. You also have a optical zoom on the corner right here. And that goes up to five times optical zoom. Well, that's pretty good for a camera that yeah, size. Yeah, it's it's not bad. It's definitely not the best you can get, but Image quality pretty good? does pretty well. It's 18.2 megapixels. Mm, so also wow. not bad. Yeah, a lot better than what I used to find when yeah, I was in high school. It's amazing. Another kind of weird thing about it, though, on the front with this design, it's got this flap, and that turns the camera on and off. Oh, I Isn't like that, that too. And you can see a little bit of uh, water down here from when I was testing it earlier. Very strange. And it's also a different color, so it's kind of annoying to me. I didn't really like that flap. Yeah. I would much prefer just a solid on-off button. Mm. This is kind of just... It's just is it pretty quick to, to come pretty. on when you turn it on? Very quick to turn on. However, whenever you're changing from different modes, and I can switch over to a different scene selection, for example, whenever you're changing to a different scene, it's a little bit slow. So there's about a second or two delay mm -hmm. when you're trying to get back to take your actual photography. Um, also, with taking photos, that's also a little bit slow. Oh, that's not good. Oh, yeah, that was. Processing. Beep. Oh, that was a while. Okay. Uh, this may be because on the bottom... Is that only when you're in scene mode or...? This is in any of them. In any mode, okay. Yeah, any modes, it's still a little bit of a delay. The bottom of it has a micro SD card, yeah. uh, which you can use in here. And then, of course, the Sony battery. It right. doesn't take long to charge it up. They come with a little uh, USB cord so you can charge it up. And uh, I had mine charged and ready to go. The battery does last a long time, though, several, several hours on end with nonstop flashing and nonstop recording. So that's not bad. So let me tell you a couple of the other different specs on this. Um, it's 18.2 megapixels. Uh, it has a RCMOS lens on the front of it. And that's also a Carl Zeiss, I believe it is. And it has optical image stabilizer in it as well. So when you're moving around, it can help you get a nice stabilized image, especially if you're, you know, taking photos underwater or whatnot. Uh, the focal length on this guy is 26 to 130 millimeters. So pretty decent. And the HD movies on it are 1920 by 1080. I did take a couple of pictures and some videos, if we can pull those up as well, to show you a couple of different things. Oh, so there's uh, some pictures from DEF CON. This was with a flash in a low light setting. I also took a comparable one without flash. And this was these were just a few of the different photos that I was trying to take with low light settings. You can tell it's kind of blurry whenever you're uh, in a dark room or whatnot. And there's my friend Dale Chase, who sings some music with me, acting weird with chicken. Um, so yeah, it was kind of blurry. I didn't really like the low light settings on it. However, when I got close up with different products, I was able to get pretty good uh, macro on here. Pretty decent. And um, I, I assume that's because it's 18.2 megapixels and it, it comes out rather well. And Tony's speaker, of course. The ones of Tony's speaker are a bunch of the different options that you can use whenever you're going through uh, different modes. So they have modes to set it from like uh, a higher blue contrast, higher red contrast, and whatnot, things like image that. Image quality does look kind of weak, I'm happy. Yeah, honestly. image quality yeah. is definitely weak. Uh, they had the panoramic view, and then these are a couple of different shots to get uh, different colorings for your, uh, your close-up shots on very still standing images. Huh. Yeah, your leprechaun. It doesn't shoot I raw, to. I would guess. No it's raws, always JPEG. No, it's all yeah. JPEG, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they do a whole bunch of these different things, which are kind of... I don't know, they're a little uh, finicky to me, so I didn't enjoy them that much. And then I tried doing a couple underwater shots and a couple of up close. That's underwater? You have a Nintendo underwater? <laughs> no, Mario's like underwater. Jeff. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, like this one is, is halfway underwater? in, oh, halfway look. under. Jeff's underwater now. And then we have Jeff while I had this sitting in a <laughs> sitting in a vase looking out That's at him. That's funny. So not bad. Hey, yeah. that'd be fun for diving, yeah. It would be very fun yeah. for diving. Seeing that it can go up to 33 feet, not bad. But I got to say, if you're wearing gloves, good. it's going to be very hard to use. So you know? I wanted to show you a video, too. I'm not sure if we can pull up the video as well. But uh, I had a problem with the audio whenever I was recording. It was Hi. It had this audio feedback in We're the going background. going underwater now. Like it sounded grind? like I was in the yep. jungle. Okay. Okay. That's pretty bad. Record audio underwater, too. Do and when I went underwater, it sounded even worse. Well, that's what it sounds like underwater. What'd you think? <laughs>
That's basically how water sounds. You ever go underwater? But don't you think if you ever, you know, raise it up out of the water, it shouldn't sound like that, right? It seems like there's some noise coming from something. Almost sounds like a motor. Right, exactly. And uh, yeah, when that's, I was uh, that's messing really with noisy. the buttons on yeah. the top, zooming out and zooming in, I could also hear the feedback from my fingers moving around on the camera. <laughs> and by the way, the mic now irritating. is wet and not working very well. <laughs> yeah. It was so you kind want to dry irritating. it before you use it again. <laughs> So um, I also got this video of them testing out a uh, ROM for know-how, and I noticed that when you zoomed in, it didn't, it didn't refocus. auto yeah. focus. Yeah. yeah, so a couple of issues with, uh, with the actual video recording on here. Um, however, it does take them in full HD, which is nice. Yeah. So my pros and cons on this, first off the pros, excellent macro shots. It does very good with those. It's small and portable, which is great, if you, especially if you're a teenager. And it has very quick turn on. However, the cons with this are the audio feedback with the video recording, which is a big problem. And it is rather pricey for the quality that you get with this camera. So I would have to give it a don't buy based on the fact that it is rather pricey. Um, all in all, I'd say definitely check out the other options out there because there are quite a few nowadays for ruggedized cameras. All right. The end. The end. <laughs> Do not buy. Uh, mostly because it's so expensive. If, it were, if that were 150 bucks, that might be a great buy. I would right? say definitely buy it. Yeah, because it it's a brat camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who's going to spend 350 bucks on a brat? At that point, I would You'd say like check that, out the more advanced point and shoots. Right. When right. you're hitting 350. Yeah, 500. at 350, 400, you can get really, really good cameras. Very good cameras. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Shannon. Shannon Morse produces the show for us. I'm going to uh, take a walk over. You know, uh, uh, what is it about? Almost a year ago, uh, Leap Motion did a uh, uh, launched and did a video that just got people so excited. The idea that you could use hand motions uh, to control a computer. It was straight out of Minority Report. Well, it's out. Only $80 for the Leap Motion. And we're going to go walk over here, if you'll follow me, uh, to Jeff Needles. Who uh, is my mic on? Oh, it is. It worked. Look at that. I'm 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 going mobile. Who uh, uh, got the leap motion? We actually got four leap motions from the company. One of them was bad out of the box. I had some trouble using it on my computer, so I said I'm going to let Jeff do the review. Now, they have come out in the last week with when, three yeah. software revisions, and the the third software revision made my leap motion work just right. great. I never so had a problem. It with does that. work. Now uh, there are some caveats, but we're going to let Jeff uh, right. show us first. This is it. Yeah, it's, it's kind of cool looking. Little device right here. It's just a little. Uh, and is this a camera pointing up? It in is there? Um, three sets of or three sets of infrareds that are tracking your fingers. Okay, so. and it plugs in via USB three. You don't USB have to 3, have USB three. Comes with three, two but cables, which is really nice. Two different length cables. Right. So like right here, I have it on my laptop. So it's really short. Uh, probably one foot cable, and then it also comes with a long, I think. But you could put it one. into a USB two port; it would work. Yeah. Okay. It should. Um, it, it, also, it does diagnostics. If it's not, right. it can check for bandwidth over the USB and stuff. It also has software which you uh, download yes. from the Leap Motion. They website. have what they call the Airspace, which uh, links to their own little app store. Which it's a have, store. Yeah, they uh -huh. have both free and uh, paid stuff. Well, that's an important thing to mention. This doesn't work just out of the box with everything. It doesn't right. replace your mouse. Nope. It only works with software designed to use Correct. Leap Motion. And there is software that I've tried and doesn't really work that well, but like that Google can Earth. literally, well, and just that can replace the mouse. Okay. So you can see right now, it's kind of freaking out. Because of where we are in the studio, um, <laughs> Uh, it's, it's going also, crazy. It's going, yeah, it the, thinks you're doing stuff. Well, there's also, it, it actually gave me a message that said uh, external infrared light detected. So ah, it's compensating. Right, so we're going to turn the lights down a little bit. Yeah. Now, uh, it does. So it does work as a user interface device, if even you, without the apps. You down? No, you download an app to do that. They, ah. For Mac, it's called Touchless, and then there's also Touchless for Windows. So now, so that's why you can do things like expose with your hands. Right. Wow. What I'm using is actually a really cool app called Better Touch Tool, and basically, what they, if you look is at, is that from Leap or somebody else? From somebody else. It's okay. third party. So if you, can you take my screen? So basically, here you can take different leap gestures oh. and assign them to different either keyboard shortcuts or oh this like is encouraging Mac or so Alpha. it's an open api that yeah they can have a very for. there's tons of games coming out every day sure. there's little there's a photo explorer for facebook and they're both mac and windows apps which is nice so give us let, just give us a demonstration put so, something up here that really shows it actually you know what'd be fun is to show I like you the, the visualizer yes the, that's so exactly what i was going to say because then you can see what it sees what it's effect. saying so 
you can see it's kind of freaking out right now. But like, I put There's my hand, hand over it. Move your fingers, those little dots at there. the end, those are your fingers. Yep, and it actually has the directionality of your hand. So it sees quite a bit. And it can bit. take two. And it has a very, very wide uh, range of vision. Uh, and when you're setting it up, they actually walk you through, here's what it sees, here's what it doesn't. Right. You have to kind of, you have to learn a little you bit You have to, too. it's yeah. definitely a learning curve. Yeah. And it also detects, it doesn't have to be a finger, so I have a chopstick here. Oh. And I'm being very So you could use that it. to draw with. Yeah, so they have some drawing apps. They were not free, so I didn't get But it. we should point out, you see it's having trouble with bright lights. Right. It can have trouble with cuffs. You it, can't wear to, your wrist I had to take my watch off. Because it sees the reflection right. off the watch? Right, and okay. it tells you all these things, which is nice. Okay. And it also tells you if there's smudges, it can help you recalibrate it. So it does help you when there are issues, but there's just, it's very frustrating sometimes. Now you're using it with a Mac, but it also yep. has a Windows version. Yep, most okay. of these apps actually have Windows versions. Okay. So I'm gonna open, there's a New York Times special tab. I don't know why you would ever want to, but if you see in the I bottom I saw the left, New York Times, can you like tab through the paper? Yeah, so I'm gonna turn, tell better touch tool not to do anything for this app because okay, it has its, it's own involved. leap motion. Okay. So it has twirl finger left to right to scroll, and then you wait press a minute, and hold. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You don't just go like this, you have to go <laughs> Yeah, see? That's stupid. <laughs> um, well, who, you, you can. Why can't it, I just go swipe? You can. Um, so if you go fast, it can <laughs> go through them quickly. <laughs> that's it's, why they do this. It's yeah. a little easier to see it's that. It's more precise like yeah. also. Yeah. But that's, look it. And then this you just, is not fun. If no. you want to read a newspaper doing this <laughs> the whole time, yeah, that's not no. fun. It's really not. No. But your um, hand, Does your hand get tired when you use this thing? It actually hasn't been because I haven't been using it that much. Yeah, but if you read a whole newspaper like right. that. You'd, you'd want to have an ice bath. There are lots for your of games. Finger. There's um, the app that was very popular on the iPad and the iPhone. Molecules is on here now for this. So, and that you can actually rotate. Yeah, them. It, it's this is another one where uh, it's similar to the way smartphones and tablets are because there's no consensus on user interface design. Right. So it's kind of hard. And if the app doesn't tell you right. how you're using, like we're I have no a, idea what we're, I'm doing right now. Gesture-based interfaces <laughs> yeah, are I've, brand new. I have no idea what I'm doing. It's with the that. same reason people have trouble with Windows 8. It's like, right. well, I don't, I don't know what the standard is yet. Right. My right. favorite gesture, actually, the most useful thing I have is that you, I can clap and have it hide everything. <laughs> and it works. And is sometimes. that touch? What is that touch list? That that's um, better touch tool. Better touch tool. And because okay. I've defined that, I just said clap slowly. Move shows my desktop. But then five fingers, I go through my spaces. Oh, that's all right. And then but I can go I up. should point out, you can do that in your trackpad, too. Right. But if I'm over here, and right. I can just... You're just going like this. Yeah. You're sitting back. You're enjoying And another life. thing, actually, I found a pro tip, is that when, if you're doing something like left to right directional, you actually want to go left to right. And then go close around. Close your palm. <laughs> and then, or else it's going to think you're going back the other way. And I had so many issues with that. <laughs> okay, let's practice everybody at home. So you do this, this close, close your, your palm, palm, come around. Right. Don't go this, or this, else you'll this. just go back and you forth. Go back and forth. Right. This, close your palm, yeah. go around. This, close your palm. Just do it with me, everybody. Yeah. Please. All right. That's yeah. Good. We got an instructional yeah, we got video on. Yeah. Um, so pros and cons. Basically, <laughs> the way I looked at this is it has a lot of potential. Yeah. It, especially what I... Well, I've everybody realized. was excited, especially yeah. at the $80 price point. Right, it's only $80. This is the future of user interfaces, yeah. people thought. I think it would be really cool if they got a lot of them, so you can actually have a real 3D space. This little thing, although it has a very wide vision, it's not the whole thing. Yeah. So if I could, like, re if it's a lot around the edge of my laptop and I can reach in and do stuff, right. then I'm like Iron Man, then I'm happy. The story behind it is the guys who designed this, one of them was a 3D modeler who got right. really tired of trying to use a mouse to do 3D modeling. He was used to working with clay. Yeah. He wanted a way that was more natural to yeah. sculpt. This might be it. We're Eventually. not there yet. Not yet. Yeah. And it's, so that's definitely a pro is the potential. The apps that are available and that are being developed seem really... Stop clapping. <laughs> trying. Um, they seem really, uh, some of them well thought out and things like if, the better touch tool. If you tool. talk with your hands, this is a very poor choice. Yeah, I know. So the better touch tool is one app that makes it actually usable. Yeah. Um, things like that. So the apps are definitely another pro. Right. And um, the physical size of it, I can just keep this in my bag. It's really easy. Yeah. And it's not like being true. Um, truths of like the connect is or something similar. It's actually, if you think about it, quite remarkable. It's, it's really a little small. device. It's USB connected. And it does diagnostics. It recalibrates easily. It's We should well. give them props for innovation, yeah. for really trying something, for making it a very affordable product. Right. Uh, and it's just, it's new. But on the cons. Yeah. I found it frustratingly sensitive. Yeah. Because I, I can't keep it hooked up all the time right. because I'll be doing things and it'll think I clapped. Right. And then all my windows will go away. Right. So I can't, it's too sensitive 
kind of. Do you talk with your hands, Jeff? Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> but it's cool. It's like, oh, my God, the boss is coming. Right. Don't oh, show him. Ah, the boss gesture. Yeah. Or you, oh, if, boss, I'm so <laughs> happy to see you. But then, or if you want to keep it like, under your desk. The boss is here. <laughs> keep it under your desk. You can maybe do this. Yeah. But um, that and... I had another con. I was but, wondering why people kept clapping when I walked into the office. Yeah, they want to hide their windows. <laughs> the other con is definitely that it's not intuitive. It's very, if anything, it's probably unintuitive at this point. But that's just the thing with gestures. So I'm gonna have to give it a don't buy. Yeah. Like it's just for even it, for eighty dollars, it's just not worth it. It's at this point. to me like the Oculus Rift and a lot of things yeah. where it is certainly a few the future. You know, there's gonna be there. This is a very interesting right. innovation. But there's no reason why you should be a guinea pig. Yeah. It's not going to be something that's really particularly useful to you. If you want to take a look at what the future might look like, great. It's cool if to you've play got $70 with. Dollars to throw or $80 cool to, to throw. Cool to play away. with. Definitely yeah. not ever going to be used in everyday yeah, life. Yeah, I do not buy. Yeah. On don't the buy. Leap Motion. But which is not to say, in Leap Motion, guys, don't be discouraged by that. It's not, not to say not it's ever. not great. It's not an innovation. It's not exciting. It's just most people just don't need this. For right now, it's, it's a not gonna don't add buy right now. Your life. Say it's clap. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Clap on, <laughs> clap. Can you teach it to do wax on, wax off? You can. You can do. You can do like with. You can do like a five finger twirl, basically. All right, pack it up and get out of here. That's uh, Jeff Needles, who will be gone as of next Tuesday. We've had him since January. He's been a first an intern and, a, and then an employee for the rest of the summer. Our co-op. We really thank you for yeah. being here. Great job. He's going thank back you. to be a senior in business at Northeastern, and we will miss you, Jeff. But you know, a standing invitation. Come back anytime. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you. We will offer you a job because we, we like you that much. All right. Uh, before we go on with the final interview review of the uh, of the uh, evening, which is the hot new phone from Google Rolla, the Moto X. Let me talk about Audible.com. I certainly don't have to. I don't even have to look at my notes because I've been an Audible fan, a customer, for 12, 13, 14 years now. No, 13 years now. I'm, I'm such a huge fan. I joined Audible in, I think it was August 2000. Uh, and I have been listening to audiobooks ever since. Not just audiobooks, but uh, lectures. They've got the great courses, uh, comedy performances, radio shows, anything that's audio. Audible's got it. Over 100,000 titles and so enjoyable. It's a great way to get history. You know, if you, it's, I listen to history books all the time. A great way to read fiction, science fiction. They've got everything. And look at the new Neil Gaiman novel, The Ocean at the End of the Lane. Neil himself reads it. It's fabulous. Now, I'm going to tell you how you can get one, any Audible book free. Almost any Audible book. Some of them are two credits. But you'll get a credit for free when you go to audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy. You'll be signing up for the gold plan. That's the book a month subscription. Definitely the most economical way to become an Audible listener. Uh, but your first month is free. Your first credit is free. Cancel any time in the first 30 days. You'll pay nothing but that book is yours to keep forever. And there's look at Ready Player One. Will Wheaton narrates that great Ernest Klein uh, book. Oh, it's so good. The Steve Jobs biography by Walter Isaacson. You're going to learn. You're going to ha be happy. You're going to be entertained. There's just a world of wonderful listening awaits you. Please give it a try. Just do this for me. You will thank me later. Audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy. I'm just finishing Peter F. Hamilton's Great North Road. It's a science fiction mystery. It's, I'm really loving it, but it's long. It's like almost 50 hours. It's taken me forever to get through it. You know, with Audible, you kind of like long books because you're like, I'm immersed in the world. All right, let me talk about the, uh, the phone that uh, just the whole world was waiting for. Um, in fact, so much attention, so much hype around the Moto X phone that I think a number of people, especially geeks, were very disappointed when they finally got the story on the Moto X. Uh, this is the first phone from uh, Google Rola. I call it Google Rola. You know, Google bought Motorola about 12, for $12.5 million about a year and a half, two years ago. The deal finally closed about a year ago. And finally, uh, after all that time, uh, this is the first phone to come out of that union. There have been other phones. In fact, Motorola announced phones uh, just a couple of weeks ago, D uh, new droids, but those were already in the pipeline. This, this Moto X is the first. Now, um, let me talk a little bit about what makes it unusual. It isn't the specs. In fact, if you look at the specs, they're, they're kind of unremarkable. Um, it is a simple phone, right? Very clean. I'll show you the size in relationship to uh, another very hot Android phone. By the way, this is an Android phone. This is the HTC One. Uh, HTC One also 4.7 inch screen, but it's 
both thicker, taller, and wider than the Moto X. That's because they were able to uh, get this uh, Moto X into uh, the uh, phone, the big screen, without, you know, it goes almost all the way to the edges of the bezel. It isn't quite the high resolution, uh, I'm sorry to say, that the HTC One is. A little bit disappointing in resolution. It's only a 720p phone, 1280 by 720. Now, I should point out that's 316 pixels per inch, just 10 pixels per inch uh, fewer than the iPhone 5. So in every way you could call this, Apple uses the term retina, but you could call this a very high res display. But I think there's some geeks who say, well, 4.7 inches, it should be 1080p like the HTC One. I, it doesn't bother me. And one of the reasons Motorola made this choice, but there are really two reasons. One's for better battery life, the other is for better performance. It is a dual core processor. It's actually a, a larger than a processor. It's the X8 system which includes dual-core ARM processors running at 1.4 gigahertz, four GPUs, these are 320, Adreno 320 GPUs, very fast GPUs. You can see what they prioritize based on this. And there are two dedicated Motorola-designed DSP chips in here, which uh, are do uh, uh, artificial language, uh, natural language interpretation. They're the always-on listening chips, and they give this phone some very interesting software features. I'm going to get to the software in a minute, because really that's the most important part of the phone. But just to finish the hardware specs, a 10-megapixel rear camera, 2-megapixel front-facing camera. It comes with Android 4.2.2, not the latest Android. That was a little bit of a disappointment, but Google and Motorola assure us they will get the newest Android very quickly. And I'm not surprised, because if you look at this phone, it is very much a pure experience. Gone are Motorola's long-hated blur. This is the AT&T version and you'll see it only has two AT&T programs on it. My AT&T and Visual Voicemail. It is not larded up with carrier software and in fact it's a very pure Google experience. This is about as close to a Google experience as you can get. It has two Motorola apps on it. The Motorola Assist, which is a very cool app. I'll tell you about that in a second. And Migrate, which lets you move from other phones, not just Motorola phones, but other Android uh, devices. And then for the rest, it's pretty much stock Android. It's Google Maps. It's Google Now. Uh, a lot of Google Now. It's really almost a Google Now phone. Um, the uh, calendar is an older version of the Google Calendar. I hope they'll update that. But until then, of course, you can to download your own and it has a different camera app and there's a reason for that instead of the stock camera app and by the way no physical buttons it is the stock that the, what, what Google wants everybody to do I think Google's using this phone in a way to tell handset manufacturers what they expect it uses the soft buttons that are typical of modern Android installations in fact the only buttons on this are the power button and an uh, up and down rockers uh, for the volume, and, and that's about it. It's, I think, a very nice design. All plastic, but very clean. This is a, a, a soft touch back. Uh, now, let's talk about the, the differences that really make this phone stand out. First of all, uh, it's going to be available on all U.S. carriers. AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, U.S. Cellular, T-Mobile, um, in the next few weeks. 200 bucks on contract. We don't know what the off-contract price will be, but uh, it's pretty sure it'll be like most of the other high-end Android phones, between $550, $600 to $650. They have 16 gigabyte and 32 gigabyte versions. This is a 16 gigabyte version, and out of the box, it comes with almost 12 gigabytes free. That's one nice thing about having a simple Google experience and not a lot of bl carrier bloatware. You have a lot of free space uh, on this phone. But the software is what distinguishes this. And I'll show you a few things. First of all, one of the reasons it doesn't have a stock camera app is so that you can do this. When you twiddle your <laughs> wrist three times, it launches, even when in locked mode, it launches the camera app. You can, of course, do it the old fashioned way. You can even turn this off. But that's nice because it's very easy. I'll show you. I'll turn off the phone and I'll show you very typically how I might use it. And I've been using it for the last few days is you take it out of your pocket, you go like this, and it's ready to take a picture. And there you go, I've taken a picture. It also doesn't have a shutter button. Uh, the camera app has a touch to focus and shoot button. And it's pretty quick. You won't miss a lot. That's taking a nice picture of the inside of my palm right now. Maybe I should move my hand out of there. And it's pretty good. It's actually a pretty good uh, uh, camera application. Uh, 10 megapixels. I'm a little disheartened by the amount of softening or processing that Motorola has chosen to do in software, and I'm hoping later versions of this phone will uh, do a little bit less. The pictures are okay, though. In fact, uh, Brian, I gave you some shots 
Uh, we'll take a look at some of these. It does best in low light. Has a little trouble with flare. And this is a fairly low light picture of my food. You can go back and forth through these and, and show them. If you zoom in on them, you, oh, this is a slow-mo video. It has a one-quarter speed video capability. That's pretty nice. Doesn't do audio at one-quarter speed. But when you shoot at one-quarter speed, you can also have the option to play back at full speed. Color is very good. I think the color is completely accurate. Uh, and it's fairly crisp. All I would say is, Motorola, please turn down some of the sharpening. Here's another uh, slow, super slow-mo uh, image. It's kind of fun to have that uh, capability. HDR is also built in, panorama, but no Google Photosphere capability. That is not part of uh, the uh, camera on this. Camera, I'd only have to give it about a B. Uh, on the other hand, in terms of launching and getting to work, it is absolutely an A+. It's the fastest camera and the easiest camera to launch so I've been very uh, happy with the results there. Sound quality is very good on the record. I, I recorded a very loud uh, band, not this one, <laughs> but another very loud band sitting right next to the speakers and it was able to give me good uh, audio recording. That's perhaps because it has three microphones uh, including noise reduction a microphone on the uh, on the phone. So I'm, I'm happy with the camera. I wish it were a little bit better quality, perhaps a little less processing. There you go. Those are the images. So that's software uh, change number one, the way you launch the camera. Of course, all the attention has gone to the second software uh, feature, and that is always on, always listening. One of the reasons they have those separate dual DSP chips is so that the phone can sit on the counter. I'm just going to put it down here, and is always listening. You train it when you first get it out of the box by saying the phrase, OK, Google Now, three times. Once it knows your voice, when you say, OK, Google Now, to the phone, it'll wake up and you can send it uh, commands. That's all without touching it. I'm going to get out of that because obviously what I said was completely worthless. Let's, uh, let's try something else, though. OK, Google Now, what's the weather? Now, I'm going to hold this up to my microphone, Brian, so you can hear its response. It's 70 degrees and clear in Petaluma. So it knows where I am because it has GPS and, in fact, understands the query and speaks to me the answer. Now, Google Now is already capable of this if you have Google Now on an Android phone. You, the difference here is it's touchless, but you can do everything that you can do with Google Now on this phone by touching a, an Android phone and giving Google Now the command, you know, pressing the speak. So the big difference here is the fact that it's always listening. People were concerned that always listening would be a problem because of uh, battery life, but I can, I'm can i here to tell you the battery life on this is, is actually very good. I'll show you. I unplugged the phone this morning at 9 a.m. It is currently at 67%. I don't have the battery saver on. And let me see if I can show you this. Uh, and uh, so we've been on for eight hours, three minutes, 31 seconds, and we're more than half. And that's been my experience, 16 to 18 hours of battery life. Uh, and in fact, this is with the screen on quite a bit. I was playing with it uh, an hour and six minutes. Um, so excellent battery life on this. Do not worry about it always on depleting the battery. It does not. And, and uh, Motorola worked very hard to make it uh, do that. So it's always listening. You can give it Google Now commands. OK, Google Now. Oh, I'm, <laughs> it's not hearing me. OK, Google Now. What is sugar? And just like Google Now, it will go out, it'll do the search, it'll come up with the answer, and it will speak it to you. Especially sugar cane and sugar beet. Not perfect, but kind of like Siri, it is a great, exciting way of taking the first steps towards having a computer you can talk to and respond to you. Never touching it is great, doesn't kill the battery life. I like the camera, uh, but let me give you the pros and cons. I know I'm going on and on, and I've taken notes here, so let me just read them to you. Uh, the uh, pro, obviously, is that always listening to Google Now is great. You can even say, when I'm in the car, I want you to read text messages to me, let me know who's calling, respond via voice. It's, it's a really great phone for driving around, and it knows you're driving around. Uh, based on the fact uh, that you're moving at a certain speed. The camera launch and shoot, I think, is the fastest I've ever seen. Uh, the customizable design, I didn't mention this, AT&T is going to have the ability to uh, try 17 different backs and a number of different accent colors. Uh, that's an AT&T exclusive right now, but eventually will be available on the other U.S. carriers. Battery life's very good, and it is a very pure Google experience. I was hoping for a Nexus phone. It's about as close as you can get, but that brings up one of the cons. They're shipping it with an older version, alas, of uh, Android 4.2.2. They do say it'll get 4.3 pretty quickly, uh, but in that respect, it isn't exactly a Nexus phone. Uh, the camera quality, not as good as I'd like, and 
I have to mention the price. It's $200, which, uh, you know, for a lot of people who are very spec conscious, seems to be high for something that is really more akin, say, to a Nexus 4. In fact, this reminded me a lot of the Nexus 4 phone in many ways. Another negative, of course, no removable SD storage and no removable battery. Um, I think that's becoming less of an issue. I wish it had Qi charging, uh, the wireless charging uh, the Nexus device has. Um, does not, and I think that's because they wanted to have as much room as possible for a battery in here. Uh, it is, on balance, though, a competent, really competent, very nice phone. Uh, one more negative for our international viewers, North America only. It will not come out at all, as far as we know, uh, around the world. Motorola says we have something different for you and other nations. Uh, I'm going to give it a definite buy uh, when you compare it to the HTC One, the Galaxy S4, an upcoming unknown iPhone 5. It is in that category. If you're heavily into Google now or you want a pure Google experience, I think that's a very strong recommendation for this. And I have to say, uh, one of the things that makes this phone desirable is how it feels in your hand. And until you've held it and used it for a while, uh, it's hard to appreciate really how good this phone is. This is a phone that Motorola very clearly has designed, not for the spec, you know, fanciers, but for people who want a functional phone, uh, a phone that does things that is, uh, that is useful. I've really just scratched the surface of what this phone can do. There's a lot more, but I've run out of time. So there you go. Uh, in, my, in my opinion, a definite buy. In fact, I will buy one uh, when I can a little later this month on the Moto X from a carrier in the U.S. near you. That's our edition of Before You Buy today. I want to thank all of our reviewers, Tony Wang and Shannon Morris and Chad Johnson and the late, great Jeff Needles. We want to thank you for being here. <laughs> well, he's not dead, but, you know, he's leaving us, so that's dead to me. Uh, we want to thank you for joining us. We do this show every Tuesday afternoon, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. That's uh, about 2,400 UTC on twit.tv. If you can watch live, I appreciate it. But if not, on-demand audio and video available, as always, after the fact, twit.tv slash BYB or on YouTube, youtube.com slash before you buy. Email us with your recommendations, your suggestions, your desires, BYB at twit.tv. TV. I'm Leo Laporte. Thanks for joining us. Remember, you got to watch before you buy. See you later.